key to sampling successfully is preparation and being systematic. The most important thing you can do is make sure that you've prepared thoroughly before you leave. And by preparation, I mean making sure, you know, at a basic level, that you have all the correct tools and forms and labels that you require for sampling and that you've got a cool box with the correct cooling packs in it and you've got your data logger and you've got your thermometer and your white coat. It all depends on the reason that you're going to take the sample. If you're taking the sample because you're investigating an outbreak, for example, then you would need to consider the sorts of foods that were associated with the particular illness, the symptoms that the patients were exhibiting. So it would be important to select the correct foods that fitted in with that illness pattern. It's always a good idea in that situation in particular to talk to the food examiner who may be able to guide on the right sort of target samples to take. Microorganisms aren't evenly distributed. They don't stand in neat rows. They grow in clumps within the food types. They may just be present on the surface or they may be present in the internal cavities of poultry, for example. So it is very important to be aware of the sort of organism that you are targeting. A sample received in the laboratory should be in the same condition as it was when it was in the shop. What I'm going to do is take a sample of your pate using sterile gloves I've just put on and the sterile equipment. And then shortly after that, I'll take a temperature recording of the okay. remaining pate. So we've got the temperature in, in the display chiller. To get it to the laboratory, a sampling officer needs to consider how it was stored in the shop. If it's stored frozen, then transport it frozen, deliver it in the same manner. And if it's a refrigerated sample, likewise. And once you've completed taking your samples, you need to make sure that you've done everything you can do to maintain continuity of evidence. You have all the information taken at the time of sampling that the food examiner might require. And then you need to make sure that your samples are sent without undue delay to the laboratory and in conditions that won't influence the growth or death of the bacteria. First thing you look at when you went in a premises, well you'd first want to get a general idea of the layout of the premises. You'd need to have a good idea of where all the areas where food is stored, prepared and handled. So probably one of the first things you would do is get the manager or whoever's in charge to take you around and show you the complete layout of the premises, assuming obviously you've never been there before. Yeah, introduce you to Andrew. This is from the Environmental Hi. Health. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? And then you would need to stand back and have a look at the practices, actually what people were doing. Of small catering premises, it's, it's not too difficult. I mean, there's only so much that they can do there, but if you were going to a manufacturer or a larger plant, you would need to have a good idea of what they're actually doing there in terms of the flow of food through the premises. What I want to do today is uh, take some environmental swabs, maybe of your food preparation services, yes, okay. fridge handles, that absolutely. sort of thing, okay, um, just to sort of gauge how you're getting on with your cleaning, how effective it is, okay. see if you find any sort of nasties. Obviously, dishcloths is a particular hobby horse of ours. We have isolated salmonella quite frequently from dishcloths that have been used to clean surfaces. Whether there's good separation of raw and cooked products is one of the areas that I would look for particularly. Always wear protective clothing. Always make sure that you've washed your hands before carrying out any sampling. Always use clean, sterile sampling tools. If you're going to use a scoop, make sure it's a new one. If you're going to use a sampling pot, make sure it hasn't been opened previously, the tack hasn't been broken. Always make sure that you have a clear aim in your mind what it is you're sampling for and why you're sampling. The techniques for swabbing will depend primarily on what type of organisms you're looking for, whether you're looking for specific organisms or just indicator organisms that indicate poor standards of hygiene. It also depends on what type of swab you're using because there are at least four different types of swabs. Some swabs for swabbing quite large surface areas by using a template. Other types of swabs for getting into little nooks and crannies. You would always take notes in a numbered notebook. At a later date, it might be something that you, you might be asked to produce your notebook in court, for instance.
If you are going to be swabbing a flat surface, then it's important to use a template so we can get some sort of quantification of the bacteria that we may identify. So we do supply templates. And to make sure that you cover the area, using a particular technique called a raster pattern so that you are covering the whole of that area. It's important that you use the appropriate medium that will be supplied from the laboratory so that they support the growth of the organisms and their transport between the premises and to the laboratory as well. It's very important that all the information about that sample is put onto the form and also onto the sample so that we can tie in the sample to the form. The date, obviously, the name of the premises, description of the area that the sample was taken from. If it is a swab, the size of the area is, is helpful so that you can give us an idea for interpretation of the result. The type of swab used, as much information as possible is, is vital. And then for that sample to be put in a, a sealed bag with a unique identification number so that we can then track that sample and make sure that the chain of evidence is in place. The sample should then be put in a, a cool box. It should have a thermocouple or temperature monitoring device in the box with the sample so that we can ensure that it's maintained at the appropriate temperature and it should be transported to the laboratory as soon as possible, directly if it is an outbreak-related sample or a formal sample so that we minimise the chain as much as possible so we've got as few handovers as possible and there should be appropriate documentation so that whoever has taken the sample then signs it over to the next link in the chain and we receive it and we'll sign the documentation in the laboratory. To summarise, the things that you should be aware of, you need to prepare thoroughly, you need to have a clear aim what you're sampling for, you need to take advice from the food examiner. Once you've taken your sample, especially if it's a formal sample, you need to be mindful of evidence and continued evidence issues and once you've got your sample result if it's a poor result you need to decide what you're going to do with it. It's very important never to use microbiology on its own. I would always suggest that other evidence is taken into account such as the hygiene practices, the training, we have cleaning schedules there. the general right. storage of food for example, all of these should go to build up a picture of practices within the premises and using the microbiology to support that not to be used on its own without any other supporting evidence so it's very important to look at the whole picture. And what are you aiming for for the fridges for instance temperature wise? Um, I'm quite old fashioned actually. I quite like to be under five. Yes. I know it's eight. Yeah, but you've got to eight, but the lower the better yeah. it is. My eight. top advice would be get training. There are a number of organisations that run training courses. If you if you feel a bit uncertain, get on a training course. You got a formal sample? Yes. Some Yes. Okay. Let's look at the plates. Well the result that we can give you is as good as the you have taken to us. So if you have taken a poor sample, you're not going to get a good microbiological result. So we're dependent on how you take the sample for us to give you an appropriate result. So it's vital that you take the samples appropriately and that you make sure that the documentation is in place. <laughs>